Now, Senator, uh, thank you for joining me. I, I, I'm, I'm just, it's really important to me that people understand that it doesn't really matter what happened in the Senate last week that uh, Obamacare didn't get repealed. This is a way to kill the individual markets without any legislative action. There's no question about it. And the fact that our president has threatened to withhold these uh, payments has been very vague in the past about whether uh, they will be made in the future has already led to harm for people. There have been insurance companies that have pulled out of marketplaces because of the uncertainty posed by his, um, his threats or his uh, lack of commitment. And people will be harmed. Uh, and I have heard, uh, especially since our uh, consequential vote last week, uh, colleagues on both sides of the aisle call on this president to make good on these payments um, because otherwise he will be destroying and sabotaging the marketplace, adding additional instability that does not have to be there, and especially harming people who have trouble with their uh, deductibles and out-of-pocket costs. We have to bring costs down, and, and, I just want to and we have to work this, together. Senator, because yeah. this not partisan. This is, in fact, it's bipartisan. There are a lot of uh, your Republican colleagues who, who agree that this is just damaging for the president to make these suggestions that these payments won't be made. And the fact that he's making them every month is actually not useful because the companies think they might not get them. And if this keeps on going, there are companies who have asked for increases in premiums of 30 percent for the 2018 year. So there are regular people who are going to renew their uh, insurance at open enrollment time, and they're going to see a 30 percent increase at that point. Point, Senator, nobody can blame Obamacare. It's absolutely correct because the president's uncertainty is playing games, frankly, uh, with the insurance marketplace. It results not only in the potential for much higher premiums in the open enrollment period if he doesn't make these payments, but it also leads to insurers leaving the marketplaces. We heard yesterday from Senator Lamar Alexander, chairman of the Senate Health Panel on which I sit, uh, make it very clear that if the president doesn't make these payments, um, that people will be hurt, people will be harmed. And he also made a commitment in which I joined to working across the party aisle to find our common ground and the cost-sharing uh, reduction payments are one uh, particularly important area where there is bipartisan common ground. The, the other place there's common ground is on uh, the Fair Drug Pricing Act. The idea that if you study health care well, you understand there are a lot of problem areas. One of them is the remarkable uh, price that Americans pay for drugs, uh, much higher than any comparable country. Of all the rich countries in the world, of all the countries that even employ universal health care, American drug prices are higher than everybody's. You're working with Senator McCain and others on, on a method to try and, and contain pharmaceutical costs. Absolutely. The Fair Drug Pricing Act is a very important uh, way in which we can hold the drug corporations that are jacking up prices on American citizens uh, accountable and lead to additional transparency. And why do we need transparency? Right now, no one's overseeing them. They can raise prices just because they can. We've seen uh, rapid increases in life-saving medications and life-extending medications, uh, whether it's the EpiPen, insulin, costs creeping up uh, when we're talking about the life-saving uh, opioid overdose reversal drug naloxone these are just examples of drugs that have gone up significantly in price in recent years and we need to act we need to hold these corporations accountable uh, real quick I, I'm almost out of time at the end of the show to the discussion about immigration uh, senator I, I, I have to say it, it's not all ridiculous the, the, the this is this may be a weird way that the Trump administration is getting around to something that uh, ends up being a comprehensive immigration reform are there pieces of what the president said about a merit-based system that you can get behind 
Well, I did not get a chance to hear the press briefing uh, that I understand just happened and talk about this policy. I did catch the tail end of your interview right before mine and want to underscore my agreement with the last point made, which is it is high time to create some certainty around the dreamers. Um, it would be the cruelest thing I could imagine to uh, to end the uh, dream policy that uh, the previous president put in place. And, um, and, and we need to make sure that we don't have a whole generation of young people who were brought to the United States as children, as infants, um, living uh, in second class, uh, uh, you know, as second class citizens. Uh, we need to pass the DREAM Act and we need to work together across party aisle to do that. Senator, good to talk to you. I'm sorry we had to get our time. I'm cut short a little bit, but we'll continue this discussion on health care. You know, it's one of my favorite topics. Senator Tammy yes. Baldwin of Wisconsin.